Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw aboard Seaborne Venture in Greenland, and we're on the Greenland Arctic Cruise here on Seaborne Venture. First time for me. I'm here with Robin West, who's the Vice President, Expedition Operations and Planning for Seaborne. And we're going to talk about uh, the expedition program that Seaborne has in general, and also specifically for right here in Greenland. And you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Robin, first of all, great to see you. I'm, I'm happy to be aboard here on Venture. Uh, this is a first for me, Greenland. I've done Antarctica a few, Antarctica a few times, but Greenland, is it's, and it really has been fabulous so far, and we're only about halfway through it, so it, it's a long cruise. But tell me, first of all, in general, let's talk about Seaborne's expedition program. What's your philosophy sort of strategy on how you deliver expedition experiences to your guests? So, you know, on board Venture, um, we... We have a fairly large expedition team. So we have a team of 24 expedition staff on board the vessel. And through that slightly larger than average team, I'd say, within the industry, we have a large, let's say, variety of skills. Mm. Um, you know, and that, 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 that really is quite an advantage. So on board our vessel, we obviously have kayaks, we have submarines. So to be able to deliver those experiences, we have sub pilots, we have surface officers, we have bear guards. Um, we have kayaking guides, we have naturalists, we have uh, lecturers who specialize in ornithology, marine biology. So, you know, I think my philosophy or our philosophy in terms of wanting to deliver expedition, we've built this incredible ship. Um, Seaborn's known for 30 years of incredible service, food, luxury, and we're really trying to marriage these two together. We want to create an expedition product where there's absolutely no compromise in terms of the onboard service luxury and a true off-ship expedition experience. And no compromise on the expedition experience as well, right? Yeah, 100%. So, Absolutely no compromise. So, so you had expeditions even before uh, Seaborne Venture. I know you had on some of your other ships, but what did Venture give you in terms of a greater ability to, to deliver real expeditions? Yep, that is very true. So, you know, we started back in 2013 with Quest down in Antarctica. So we've been operating an expedition type vessel for, for a number of years. From that, we grew out a program called Ventures by Seaborne, where we have smaller expedition teams on our ocean-going fleet, and we kind of moved that around the world into Alaska, into Iceland, Greenland, uh, Australia, New Zealand, on some of our world cruisers. So a lot of our guests really got to experience that product in some way, shape, or form through Zodiacs and Kayaks. Right. Building, however, a dedicated ultra-luxury expedition vessel with a PC-6 eye-strengthed hulls with submarines, um, with a team of 24 expedition staff, that allows us to take what we were doing and to really harness it and focus it into this incredible, true expedition experience. To be able to take this vessel up like we did last year as far as 82 degrees north up into the heavy pack ice off Svalbard and sit there and watch a polar bear come walking around the vessel. Yeah. You know, we to get into the Amazon, and not just to Manaus, but to get way into the Amazon. Those are the kind of things we can do with this vessel because of its size, maneuverability, and capability, and in terms of how we designed it, particularly to deliver expedition experiences. And now you have another one coming on board, Seaborne Pursuit. Uh, what's that going to do for you in terms of giving you a greater ability to even go more places? That's right. 100%. So we're really looking forward to welcome Seaborne Pursuit at the end of uh, July. So we take delivery end of July, um, and then we have a commissioning period, and then we're going to start operating Pursuit. What Pursuit does for us, it gives us the ability to cover a greater diversity of itineraries around the world. Mm -hmm. So currently we have Venture moving from south down in Antarctica, kind of through the tropics, and then moving through into the British Isles, and eventually up into uh, the Arctic. Pursuit is really going to start to allow us to bring on warm tropical expeditions. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move across the Pacific, three, four voyages, totally across the Pacific. We're going to move into Papua New Guinea, into the Azmat, into West Papua, into Raja Ampat. From there, we're going to come down into the Kimberley. And so oh, it wow, really gives us fantastic diversity in our overall itineraries. So you're going to have, well, we're going to talk about itineraries in a yep. second, but uh, you, we, you mentioned the expedition team and you have a, a, a broad range of skills. How do you, how do you select your, your expedition team? I mean, uh, I've, I've met a few of these guys over the years and they just sort of, they're very nomadic. They go from, from one ship to another, but they also stay with certain lines for a while as well. Uh, and they have incredible knowledge, incredible uh, backgrounds in, and some have PhDs, some have, you know, they, they have some kind of master's degrees in different, what do they do? So how do you actually 
actually sit down and figure out who's the best fit for you? So um, we have a lady in our office called Yada Fischlut who does all our staffing. And uh, I think currently we probably have a database of around about 5,000, sorry, 500 expedition 500. staff. Yeah, around about 500 expedition staff. And to be honest, the expedition industry is a small industry. And so it's a lot of word of mouth. Um, I spent 20 odd years in the expedition industry. Yada has probably spent the same amount of time. And so you get to know people, it's word of mouth. And the nice thing about the industry and the size of the industry is if someone isn't good at their job, you find out quite quickly. Right. And so, there's typically a very high standard, generally speaking, of expedition staff. Mm. And so, to be honest, we source it through word of mouth. Um, we have a lot of contacts that we've developed over the years, and so that kind of creates a core team that we have. And then we work with that team who have friends and people in the industry. So it's very much word of mouth. And you said you had about 27 uh, team members on board this, this vessel, right? So this vessel, we have 24. So we have 20, 24. Both, so both Seaborne Pursuit and Seaborne Venture will have a team of 24 expedition staff. Wow, that's pretty pretty significant. Yeah. Now, uh, let's talk about this cruise in particular. Uh, um, what, are the kind, what are the expedition experiences that you offer on board? Uh, and is there, you know, is there a range of what people can do in terms of fitness ability and things like that? Yeah, for sure. So on this itinerary, yeah, up in the Arctic in Greenland, um, you know, what, what we really try to focus on is delivering a diverse experience. So one day we might be doing a Zodiac tour, then we're doing a Zodiac landing, coming ashore, we're offering hikes. Some hikes are more difficult than other hikes. So we do have different hikes for different kind of, let's say, ability mm. in terms of levels of, of difficulty. But uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, we, we, we may sometimes come into a small town because we also want to focus on cultural right. experience. That's what we've been doing the last couple of days, except for one day, we have been going into the towns and taking yep. tours. And, and some of these are fairly long walks. Uh, and sometimes in this particular, we're, we're in, what's the town we're in now? Susimut. Susimut. i got to remember these, yep. these the so pronunciations. Just north of the Arctic Circle. Just Absolutely, just north. And we actually took a, a and it's a lot of up and down hills. And yep. I wasn't so, I was fine, but I wasn't so sure other people would but everybody seemed to handle it but then you had actually a more strenuous hike too yeah correct we've had some more strenuous hikes in nuke um, and sometimes hikes are almost spontaneous you know mm -hmm. sometimes we know we we work with a tour operator in an area and we know we've got some hikes but some places um, like yesterday for example we came ashore and we took a look at the area we did some scouting and we offered just some you know just hikes that we kind of come up with on the day so we we, we do try to really vary it from day to day to Especially in this part of the world, in, in, in Greenland, we want you to be able to explore these incredible, beautiful fjords, see big icebergs, have a look at glaciers, do zodiac cruises, go kayaking, join us on a submarine dive, go hiking, come into town, visit the small communities. Like today, you had an opportunity to taste some of the local cuisine mm -hmm. in town. So it's really about a mix of activities to give you this overall experience of what, what, what Greenland's all about. Well, just learning how people live up here. These are people that, you know, they, they, they live in this town uh, and, and they, they, everything, they have a hospital, they showed us the whole areas, yep. they have churches, they have, they, they, and, and they're natives. And it's amazing to hear how they live up here. And this is almost the summer here and it's still Correct. a little cold, right? <laughs> Correct. It is summer up here at the moment, um, but yeah, it's probably a couple of degrees outside. Yeah, yeah. So, so it is. It is amazing to learn all about them. Now, uh, we we've done basically um, two walks here, as I mentioned. And uh, do you do pro try to provide these in all the places that you have a hike or something? Is that what was an option? Yes, that is true. I mean, you know, when we come into these more, let's say, um, small villages on the west coast of Greenland, it it is a mixture of trying to offer some hikes, but also having an opportunity to spend some time in town to experience the local culture and to experience what it's like to be living in these places. Um, and then, of course, when we go a little bit more remote, like tomorrow, we're going to head up a very, very steep fjord. We're going to go do some Zodiac cruises in front of glaciers. Um, it's, it's a balance. We, we, we try and create this balance in terms of where we go and what we do and as we offer various activities through, through Greenland. Yeah, we're doing this interview right about oh, not even halfway through this cruise. I still <laughs> got a lot more to go and a lot more experience to do a lot of Zodiac. And, and we've, we've got some good stuff coming up. You know, once we get around the southern part of Greenland, get into the east southeastern part of greenland we're going to start getting into some some good sea ice big glacial ice it, this, there's going to be some good so stuff still to come definitely some new experiences to come now sure. you you had mentioned a couple of the things and i just di actually did do the kayaking yesterday which okay. was amazing and i was scheduled to do the, the sub today but we're going to do that another day um those are some of the options you offer and and uh, the, but but those are extra right that they're going to cost a little more 
So that's correct. So basically what we tend to offer is whenever we, you know, Zodiac tours, Zodiac landings, guided hikes, those are always included. The submarine dives, the kayaking, that is optional and for charge. But what we also do whenever we come into a town or an area where we have a third party operator that delivers the experience, mm. we always have an inclusive experience for the guests. Okay. So, you know, all around the world, that's not just here in Greenland, everywhere we go in the world, when we're not operating remotely by ourselves, doing zodiac tours and landings and that kind of stuff, when we're coming into more of a port and we're delivering an experience through a third party vendor, um, we always, for every single guest, we have an inclusive tour available. We do sometimes have optional tours too because luxury is all about options. Mm -hmm. And so we might have one or two optional tours. But generally, the inclusive tour is what we want you to experience. Based on where we're going, based on the itinerary, based on what we want you to have the best experience for the day, we're selecting the inclusive tour that's going to give you the best let's say, experience in line with the product that we're trying to offer. And actually, you know, the night before is when you have your briefings for the next yep. day. And very often, you know, maybe you're going to someplace different because it wasn't, the conditions weren't suitable and you have to kind of change on the fly. So it must be a little bit challenging to figure out, you know, what, you, what you're going to do, right? It is. You know, the thing with expedition is all about flexibility. I think that's a, that's a very common word in the expedition industry. Um, and as you've seen on this trip, you know, we, we've, um, we wanted to go south after leaving Nuke. Um, there's quite a bit of ice south. So we, we made a calculated risk to come north, mm. to come to Susimut, to give us an extra day or two before getting down to Kakatok, Nanortalik and those areas. And looking at the ice charts this morning with the captain, it's actually paid off. Oh, so you, we, you, you gambled on one, right? We've gambled on one. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't work out. But an expedition trip is all about flexibility. You know, we, we're operating in an area where we have ice. Ice conditions are changing every single day. And uh, we've made a decision today, and we're going to benefit from that in two or three days' time because Kakatok and the Nautilic and some of these places like Prince Christians in the south, the ice that had wrapped around from the east is now starting to break up and move away, and I think we're going to have access to those areas. So a little bit of flexibility. Sometimes it, it, it gives us a positive result, and sometimes we have to come with a plan C. So, so basically the ice doesn't, doesn't you, you can't order around the ice, right? No, no, we've got no control over the ice. We have a vague idea with currents in terms of where it's going. Right. And there's fantastic information today that gives you, you know, ice conditions and thickness and all that kind of data. So a lot of the planning that the guests really don't see, there's so much planning that goes into manipulating sometimes an itinerary to give you the overall best experience. That's amazing. Now, and yesterday we benefited because we were at this, and I can't remember the, the name of camp, uh, what was it called? Oh, you're, you're, uh, we're, 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 yes. we're, we're both deciding <laughs> what that was. But it was, it was, up, it was uh, up what's called uh, Gotthard Fjord. I yeah. just can't camp. And it was, it was actually a, a, a place that you can go glamping at this place, but you took, you took the entire place out. Where, so we, and, and we, after I did my kayaking, I was able to go ashore yep. and you can do hike, hikes and stuff like that. And it was nice. And you can have some local delicacies there and a car, or champagne and caviar too. But that was, that, that's, that's not local. That's everywhere. But uh, it, it really, it was a lovely experience. So that's the kind of experience you can deliver yep. too. hundred percent. Right? You know, our visit yesterday up that fjord, got up fjord, all the way up into that camp was the very first ship they've ever had. Really? Yep, very first ship they've ever had. So we actually took that experience, worked with our tour operator, and then tailored it to exactly what we wanted it to be. Um, and it was a fantastic day yesterday. I mean, it was a beautiful setting. You had some great kayaking experience. It, it was a, it a was really gorgeous. complete day with, between the two of those things. That really was a, a great day. One, yeah. Really wonderful. The rest of the time we've been doing some hikes around these towns, and they're wonderful to learn all about their culture. But And you know what gave us the opportunity to do that was based on how we built the ship. Because the last eight miles going up to that fjord, there are no soundings. I heard that, yeah. And so we have a forward point in sonar specifically built and put into the ship designed to be able to operate safely in those areas. And in addition, we have what's called a WASP system, which we can connect to a Zodiac, run in front of the ship, and it feeds live data back to the vessel and gives you a profile of what the floor looks like under the ocean. And so we can safely navigate this vessel almost anywhere because of that equipment. Oh, that's great. When I heard that, I said, okay, I think I'm okay with going in there. <laughs> now, now, let's talk in general about, you mentioned, um, um, you know, everybody knows about Antarctic and now maybe Arctic. Um, but you mentioned earlier all these other great expedition cruises. Uh, and then when you have the new ship, you're going to do even more. Uh, but what are some of the cruises that you can, you can highlight that really people, people think of expedition as maybe uh, Antarctica, Galapagos potentially, uh, uh, Arctic. 
and maybe a little Norway and Northern Lights, things like that. But what are some of the other ones? You mentioned Amazon, uh, we got, and you're going out to the Pacific. But what are some of the other ones that maybe our, our viewers, our travel advisors should be recommending to their clients beyond Antarctica? So, um, you know, Amazon is fantastic. And I'm not talking about just to Manaus. I'm talking about past Manaus. Mm -hmm. Um, once you start getting past Manaus, the river starts to narrow a bit more. It, it really starts to become quite interesting. Um, Pursuit is going to offer some fantastic itineraries. We're going to do multiple sailings across the Pacific, um, a lot of remote islands. That's where I actually started my career. My very first time ever on an expedition ship was jumping on a ship in uh, San Antonio and going across the Pacific, about four or five voyages all the way across to Guam. So Pursuit is going to take us across the Pacific, comprised of about three or four sailings. And... Uh, you know, often you fall in love sometimes with the first place you've been to. And the Pacific for me is, it's incredible. You know, there we can obviously use the subs with incredible unlimited oh, yeah. visibility, reefs, coral reefs, walls, sharks. We're going to see some fantastic stuff. Um, we'll do scuba diving, we'll add to the program, snorkeling. Um, but what's amazing in those areas is as you move through the Pacific, either from east to west or west to east, it's amazing how the culture just changes slightly from one island to the next and the different island groups. So it's a fantastic cultural experience. And then once you get into Papua New Guinea and you get into the Azmat, you probably don't get better cultural experiences anywhere in the world in terms of visiting villages and watching tribal dances and traditional from betel nut eating to land diving, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating. And so Pursuit's going to offer up itineraries like that across the Pacific. And then, of course, what's really exciting um, is we're going to move into the Kimberley. So the Kimberley is not very West, well known. Western Australia. Yeah, yeah. Western Australia it lies between Broome and Darwin. Um, not particularly well known, but an incredible destination. Uh, I was very fortunate. I spent a couple of years up there on, on an expedition ship in between Broome and Darwin. And there's, there's phenomena that happen up there that happen nowhere else in the world. Um, from, you know, Talbot Bay with horizontal waterfalls to Montgomery Reef. You've got the incredible Aboriginal art and the Bradshaw art, the Guion Guion art. It's, it's fantastic. We're really looking forward to be able to share that with our guests. So you would recommend for wait next year and, and really look across the Pacific. And obviously this ship's going to con continue doing Antarctica, the Arctic and Amazon and things like that, right? 100% correct. You know, a lot of people, to what you were saying earlier, a lot of people always associate expedition with cold places. Um, Antarctica, Arctic. Um, and that tends to be the most popular type places. Galapagos, maybe two, that's how people get into the expedition business. But beyond those destinations, expedition is a, is, a, is a way of traveling and it's a way of experiencing destinations with a team of experts on board who really educate you about the places you're going to. Um, that's through lectures, through recaps, through briefings, through guided walks. Um, and so, you know, places like the Pacific, um, places like the Kimberley, those are incredibly good warm weather expedition destinations. Mm -hmm. And we really look forward to on pursuit delivering those. And, so, and that's going to give us great diversity, yeah. you know, because we're going to have venture, which will continue with more of the traditional cooler climates, Arctic, Antarctic, British Isles in the summer. But venture is going to be a tropical ship for about nine months of the year. So Pursuit, I'm sorry. Pursuit's going to be a tropical ship. Pursuit, sorry. Pursuit, okay. is, oh, sorry, that's adventure. Sorry. Yeah. Pursuit is going to be a tropical ship for about nine months of the year. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to that, and it's not too far away. Now, would you recommend that uh, our viewers, our travel advisors who are booking their clients, try to pre-book some of these expedition offerings, or should they just wait to see what happens? Because I know there's a lot of changes that go on depending on where you are and what you're going. But uh, And there's some, maybe the subs or the kayaking or something like that. Or should they just tell their clients, look, when you, once you get on board, uh, you can book these things. So what I would recommend is that they book the subs and the kayaks as soon as they can. If they've booked an itinerary or they have interest in an itinerary and they've put in a deposit and they want to book an itinerary, I would look at booking the subs and the kayaks to get themselves a spot because those do tend to fill up quite quickly. And they move them if, if, if they can't do them on a certain day, as sure. I'm, I'm the case, you know, they'll, they'll do it another day. Right? hundred percent. As I said earlier, there's a level, there's a certain amount of flexibility. You know, if we don't operate one day, we have that in mind that when we choose a different destination, we still want to be able to deliver those experiences. So I would really recommend that submarine dives, kayaks book in advance. There's no need to book anything else in advance. Keep in mind that every port we go to where we have a third party operator, we deliver what we believe is the best inclusive experience. And beyond that, I would say wait till you get on board, wait till you get a sense of what the ship is doing, 
the expedition team will give you more information and then if you want to book because we do have some optional tours with third-party operators but it's it's not that common um, but there's no need to book anything else when you come on board you're allocated a group zodiac tours zodiac landings everyone so there's no need to book anything related to let's say the core product which right. is the zodiacs uh, and the zodiac landings and the zodiac tours and hiking and things like that there's always plenty of room for everyone to join us on those activities subs and kayaks if you're really keen to do them i would book them in advance okay good advice now where can our travel advisors go and and their clients go to learn more about your expedition programs and and some of the expeditions you offer on, on specific cruises? So we have two places that's probably best. One is obviously, of course, the website, mm -hmm. uh, um, You know, The website's designed so you can quite easily work out between our ocean fleet and our expedition fleet in terms of looking at various itineraries. But what I would also recommend is we have a thing called Voyage Tracker. Mm -hmm. So on board the vessel, we have a device that tracks the ship's position. It's overlaid onto a Google Earth map. The expedition team write a journal every single day in terms of where we went, what we did. There's photograph posted. And so what you're seeing there is 100% the experience that was delivered on board the vessel. And so if you go onto the website, you can go into Voyage Tracker and you can click by ship, by year, and you can view all the sailing. So if you have an interest in coming on this particular sailing that you're on right now, when the sailing ends, two days later, you can click on it. You can have a look day by day where we went, what we did. You can see the route map that we took. And the photographer, videographer on board will upload a voyage journal of about 15 to 20 minutes. It's a documentary style video, which will also show you exactly where we went and what we did. That's fantastic because it can give travel advisors a way to sort of promote and to incentivize their clients to go on these wonderful dis voyages of discovery with you just by seeing all this stuff, right? No, 100%. You know, it, it's a great tool for them because if they have a client who's interested in going, let's just say Antarctica, for example, um, if they really wanted to, they can go onto Voyage Tracker and they can see what the experience is like in November, they can see what it's like in December, and they can start actually, it's a great reference for them to be able to see what the experience is like at any given time. And, you know, everyone's brochures has really good photographs on them. That, what we put in Voyage Tracker, is the real experience of what we did and delivered every single day. So it's an incredible accurate reflection of what the product is sounds great and I, I think i want to go back and, and review what i just did so we'll <laughs> see what happens well robin i want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us today we're about four days into this sailing and we're not going to be done until i think july 1st or 2nd so Correct. we got a we got a ways to go still but i'm looking forward to this we've had some amazing times already uh some amazing you know really understanding greenland because i honestly i did not know what to expect antarctica okay. i i kind of got you know i knew it a little bit yep. But uh, I did not know anything about Greenland, and now I think I know a little bit, but looking to know a lot more in the next few days. Good. Absolute pleasure. It's, it's fantastic to have you on board, and uh, I can honestly say the good stuff is still coming. All right. We're waiting for the good stuff, and you'll see this. Actually, we're going to intersperse some of those videos as we do do the good stuff. And I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>